What is going on, guys? JD from New York here, and welcome to a very special Monday episode of WWE Off The Script. This is episode number 16, part number 3, for your week ending June 8th, 2014. Like I always say, guys, this is your number one source for all your WWE needs right here on YouTube.com. Now, JD, why are you doing Off The Script on Monday, bro? Why are you doing it on Monday? What happened? What happened? Tell you what happened. I had a big week, guys. Probably the biggest week uh, since I've been on here. Uh, you know, doing my thing, the Call of Duty thing, the you know, the video game thing, the wrestling thing. You know, Legend of Thunder shouted me out in his video about the new Call of Duty Advanced Warfare uh, beta, possible beta for that. He shouted me out. Apocalypse shouted me out. Justin Labar from WrestleZone.com, Chairshot Reality, shouted me out. I took care of doing a very special video dedicated to him. And his group of guys over there at Chair Shot on Sunday. I did Behind the Mic episode number six. So if you guys have missed that, if you guys were the ones asking for Behind the Mic, I did a Behind the Mic for Sunday. Go check it out. Links are down below. Everything you need is down below. If you missed parts one and two of Off the Script, it's there. If you guys want to be reaffirmed with Chair Shot Reality, if you guys missed any episodes, I'll leave the link to their homepage down below. Go and check them out. Go and support. They'll be down in the description from, from now on in each one of my WWE videos. And if you guys missed Behind the Mic, as always, link is down below in the description. Thank you guys for all the support. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing on here, and I'm only going to get better. Thank you guys very much. But what is at hand on this Monday, guys? I'm going to wrap through this week's news and rumors, and then I'm going to begin working on, obviously, next week's news and rumors this week. We got Monday Night Raw tonight. Uh, we got... Uh, the review coming tomorrow, Tuesday morning, so look forward to that. But as far as what is going on with The Shield, Seth Rollins, major news, major news on Seth Rollins. Why was his heel turn done? According to reports, after this week's Raw, the word backstage was that the plan to turn Seth Rollins was made about four weeks ago. Actually, the plan was to split Roman Reigns from the Shield, but those plans seem to have changed. The Rollins heel turn was actually decided on the day before Raw and was not written into the original script, like I had already kind of felt was the, the reasoning behind this. I knew it was going to be a last-minute thing. It just reeked of last minute. Because how do you go from having an all-out war at payback between Evolution and The Shield. Seth Rollins diving off, uh, you know, entrance ways and, you know, the whole thing with them just beating the shit out of each other there at payback. And then all of a sudden he's going to turn his back on his Shield brothers. This really didn't make sense. But according to the reports, let me continue. No reason was given except the WWE potentially wanted to keep that a surprise. The original plan was to have Roman Reigns break away from the group and begin a single star with the idea and become a single star with the idea that he would eventually take on John Cena's spot as the top guy in the company. A little too soon for that, bro. A little too soon for that. Roman Reigns, listen, you know, I'm all about Roman Reigns. I'm a fan of Roman Reigns. I think he's going to be a great asset to the company. But all this, you got you got to Sit back and think logically about this. Everyone is just super quick to give Roman Reigns the keys to that castle. You can't do it like that, man. You can't do it. They're going to break him away and have him become a single star. And they already have the idea, according to these reports, that he's going to take John Cena's top spot. Who's number two right now? Daniel Bryan. Once John Cena's gone, Daniel Bryan moves up. It's not going to be John Cena, Daniel Bryan, and when John Cena goes, Daniel Bryan's going to move down, and Roman Reigns is going to leapfrog everybody. That doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And again, if you guys missed behind the mic, number six, Dolph Ziggler. It's all about political bullshit. That's why he's not being pushed. If they don't like you, if the machine doesn't like you, if Vince and Triple H don't like you, and they don't see anything in you, you will not amount to anything in WWE. Look at this example. Roman Reigns. Everyone's raving about Roman Reigns. Everyone loves Roman Reigns. They're on the Roman Reigns hype train. 
What happens? They're already talking about him taking over John Cena's spot. That's the way the business works. I'm not in the business. I have not the slightest idea how it works. I'm only a fucking outsider viewing what's going on. Reading internet reports and watching the programming. I'm, an, I'm a looker on the outside of that bubble. But that's, that's how it, it seems to me. Political bullshit, man. Political bullshit. Him taking over John Cena's spot already. Too soon. This guy needs years of grooming before he even comes close to taking John Cena's spot. That's just ludicrous to even think about right now if they're the WWE. You know, if you're the WWE. It's ridiculous. The first time they wanted to split up the group was around WrestleMania. But they had held off those plans because they were very over as faces, which was a good thing by WWE. You know, and it shows the potential of the Shield and... How talented they really are. They were over his heels, massively over his heels. They did the same thing as baby faces. It's like they went into that transition seamlessly with no trouble at all. They said, bring it on. We're up for the challenge. And they passed that test flawlessly, A+. plus. So that was a very good idea by WWE to hold off those plans to break them up because they were so over as baby faces. You know, they, we got that big match with the Wyatt family, Elimination Chamber. That was awesome. That may that may have never happened if they weren't faces. You know? Who knows? But they were also bringing in good money merchandise-wise. That's why the WWE held off on on uh, turning them uh, you know, away and breaking them up. There was even an article in the WWE magazine that leaked last week supposedly revealing original plans of their split. I don't know if I reported that, but WWE magazine uh, was published ahead of time before the actual storyline took place on TV. And uh, Dean Ambrose was conducting the interview with one of the guys from WWE Magazine, and he said his former teammates. So, I don't know, man. I don't know if they're actually going through with that split with the original plans. We don't know. We've got to find out. The decision to turn Rollins surprised a lot of people since many figured that the person that would turn heel would be Dean Ambrose. And I know a lot of you guys have commented to me and tweeted me the, that you guys seen Dean Ambrose as the one to turn. I said Roman Reigns makes the most sense, even though I knew I knew that was going to be illogical because they were going to feud him with Triple H. That's what I've been reading. That's what they seem to be doing. But the only other one out of the two, if I had to choose one or the other, obviously it would be Dean Ambrose over Seth Rollins. And a lot of you guys agreed with that. So, to a lot of people's surprise, Rollins took the spot, and everyone thought that it should have been Dean Ambrose. Some were questioning the heel turn of Rollins, since he's a high flyer, and does all those moves that gets people over as baby faces. He's got the flips. He's flipping around. Jumping off fucking, uh, you know, stage props, entrance ways. You name it. Seth Rollins has got a baby face moveset. That's clear. He's got the look of a baby face. You slap some fucking band t-shirts on him. You have him look like he looked like in NXT. You make him a baby face. You give him some fucking kick-ass music. And you got your next Jeff Hardy slash CM Punk. You build him up, he's got great mic skills, he's got great in-ring stuff. He may be the actual, uh, he may actually be the best wrestler in the Shield, period. He's, I think he's got the best in-ring skill out of everyone in the Shield. You guys may not agree with me, but uh, that's more my style. I love Dean Ambrose's style, I love the way Dean Ambrose, uh, you know, comes off. Mike skill, he's got a great uh, in-ring work ethic, uh, but more... The style that I'm looking for and that I enjoy is Seth Rollins because he's got the overall package. He can work the ground. He can work the air. That's just me. But a lot of the people thought Dean Ambrose was going to turn over Seth Rollins. So I'm questioning that the heel turn of Rollins, uh, like I said, he's a high flyer. He's got a lot of moves that turn, uh, obviously, that are baby face moves. This should be good for Rollins, though, since he gets the main event rub from Randy Orton and Triple H. The reason they wanted to turn him was just to shake things up. Again, this is just the WWE beating to their own drum. Beating to the sound of their own drum. Was it done for shock factor? I think so. I think this was done more so last minute. WWE didn't have any plans going forward for this. And they did it based solely on shock factor. I don't think the WWE as of right now has any idea where they want to go with this. So we're going to be in for a surprise week in and week out. Uh, I don't know any more than what I'm reporting here to you guys. I'm sure you guys don't know any more than you already know reading various sources uh, when you're not listening to me. But I really think this was done, merely done on shock factor and, and the fact that, the, like the report says, WWE wanted to shake things up. They wanted to just move forward with this. Because realistically, there was no other way to go um, 
with the Shield getting 2-0 on Evolution. But then, you gotta question yourself. The Shield went 2-0 over Evolution. 2-0. They beat them at Extreme Rules, they beat them at Payback. Why turn? Why would Seth Rollins think about that? That's like, that's like me going into the World Series... I don't know, I'm just making up a fucking ridiculous analogy. Let me go into the World Series, Mets and Yankees, whatever, I'm using two New York teams. The Yankees are up 2-zip, and uh, that's like me playing for the Yankees, and I'm like, you know, fuck this, I want to be traded to the Mets. Whatever, it's some, something along those lines, you know? But that doesn't really make sense to me. If they're up 2-0, why are you going to turn your back on the winning team and go to the losing team? Storyline-wise, it just doesn't make any logic. So, again, I think the WWE merely did this, like I said, to shake things up. Mostly do. They wanted to get that shock factor over. That's that's all I did. They did it with The Undertaker. They took another stab at it with The Shield. How's it going to work out? We don't know. That's the best thing about watching this all unfold. We get to see where they want to go with this. But uh, prior to Sunday, there were plans to resume The Shield's feud with the Wyatt family for a short-term feud. I don't want to see it no more. It's been done. Move on. There's no word on what the plans are for The Shield, but one possible scenario could be that they add Sami Zayn from NXT, since he's a natural babyface and would benefit by getting the rub from top guys. That could be a possibility. That could be a possibility. Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins got similar movesets. That could possibly, that could potentially work, you know. I, you know, I, I mentioned this before. I don't like the way the WWE brings up these guys from NXT. I haven't liked it, uh, you know. I didn't like it with Brodus Clay. I didn't like it with Adam Rose. I didn't like it with uh, uh, what's his name, Bo Dallas. I don't like it. It, it. it just speaks laziness to me. If you want to bring these guys up, I brought up the idea of. Putting Sami Zayn, bring him up to the main roster, it's his debut. Put him against a Daniel Bryan. Put him against a Dolph Ziggler. Bring up Adrian Neville, put him against a Daniel Bryan. Put him against a Randy Orton. Bring up Tyler Breeze, put him against a Ziggler. Put him against someone that knows how to work. Put him against a, a Kofi Kingston, let them go out there and steal the show. Put him against a Wade Barrett, a Rob Van Dam. Put him against a Cesaro. Put these guys with... Main event level guys and let them get over that way. Let them get over with in-ring skill instead of putting them in a fucking storyline that doesn't make any sense. They're not going to generate any interest from the crowd. The crowd is there to see wrestling. I want to see wrestling. These guys are going to get over by wrestling. Everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place. They'll get a you know they'll they'll get uh you know familiar with their characters. You know, but the one thing that everyone wants to see is how they're going to work in the ring. You know, these guys have great characters. You know, they, if they continue doing what they're doing in NXT, there's no doubt in my mind that these guys are going to succeed on the main on the main roster. Some of them don't pan out. You know, you guys don't think Bo Dallas is going to pan out. You guys don't think Adam Rose is going to pan out. But I say give it time. I never turn my back on a new talent because the WWE certainly can use new stars. Since they're already wasting the fucking main event talent that they got on the mid card right now and not doing anything with it. Sami Zayn, I would like that to see possibly him join the Shield. But if you're going to bring these new guys up, like I mentioned, instead of putting them in cheesy storylines like Adam Rose and Jack Swagger, for example, bring these guys up. Have them make an immediate impact. Tyler Breeze versus Daniel Bryan on Monday Night Raw, just out of the blue. Can you imagine the fucking match that those two would have? That could potentially lead to something greater in the future and start building towards a potential feud in the future. That's just me. I may be speaking out of my ass, but that's just my idea to bring these new guys up. You know, that's just me. Another source states, the general feeling with WWE was that Seth Rollins turning on the shield was good as far as mixing things up and came as a shock, but there was still at least some negative reaction. Word is that there were more than a few people backstage questioning the logic of Rollins turning. Also, the belief from one source is that they were going to split the group up, or if they were going to split the group up, it should have been Dean Ambrose that turned. So again, another source claims that a lot of people were disappointed, questioning the logic of this. Why was it Seth Rollins? Everyone had the idea that Dean Ambrose was going to be the one to turn instead of, uh, instead of Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns 
was said to be more than a little banged up after the entire event took place, after Payback and after Monday Night Raw, okay? There's a feeling that they may at least take it easy on him or possibly give him some time off uh, for the next couple of weekends' live events. Good idea because Roman Reigns is really, if you've seen on TV, he's been taking the majority of the punishment. He's been, he's been beat bad. Kendo sticks and steel chairs and steel steps and... It was an all-out war, man. That match at Payback was an all-out war. And then on Monday, when Seth Rollins turned, steel chairs over the back. He already had stitches above his eye from a steel cage match here with Randy Orton. So Roman Reigns' rest, I think he, I think it's pretty much well-deserved at this point. According to figure4wonline.com, Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton are currently planned for the June 29th Money in the Bank pay-per-view. The idea is that Reigns versus Rollins would happen at the next pay-per-view, Battleground, with Reigns versus Triple H happening at SummerSlam. So you guys coming to me, JD, you think Seth Rollins will win Money in the Bank? No, Seth Rollins is not going to go anywhere near the WWE Championship. Dean Ambrose or Seth Rollins is planned for Money in the Bank. Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns is planned for Money in the Bank with an eventual Reigns versus Triple H match happening at SummerSlam. So, those are the plans as of right now. Take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if it's going to be true or not, but we'll find out on WWE TV as the weeks unfold. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, news on Rusev. Rusev versus Mark Henry has been discussed for WWE's June 29th Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Officials have talked about doing a feud between Rusev and John Cena down the line. Hey, they're building Rusev, uh, Rusev up as a monster. Mark Henry... I don't, I don't mind being, uh, I don't mind Mark Henry being fed to Rusev. He's not on the roster anyway right now. Actively, he'll come back, put Rusev over. One, two, three. Cena versus Rusev. I don't know. If you guys didn't like Bray Wyatt and you're fans of Rusev already, what are you gonna think of John Cena when he gets his hands on the barbarian, the 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 fucking Bulgarian brute, whatever the fuck they call him? I'm, a, I'm, I'm into Rusev. I like the character. I like where it's going, but. If you're going to feed him to John Cena already, it may be too soon. I think Rusev and Cena, if the, they do collide, I do think Rusev really, really needs to go over. I thought Bray Wyatt needed to go over, but if you're building Rusev up as a monster, you got to go over. Clean. Because my idea, my vision for Rusev, if you want Bill Goldberg to be coming back at WrestleMania 31 in California, if you want Bill Goldberg to be going into the Hall of Fame, if you're going to have all these plans for Bill Goldberg to be in WW2K15, and he wants one more match... Rusev versus Goldberg would be the ideal match at this juncture. That's just me. That's just me. Fantasy booking. Let me know what you guys think. And finally, guys, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, WWE has reportedly uh, quietly put money into Diamond Dallas's page efforts to help Jake Roberts and Scott Hall by paying for people who are experienced with rehabilitation to help out if any problems come up with the two. It's a daily battle for both Hall of Famers. I wish them both the best. Um, I've been following this for a couple of, a couple of months now. You know, ever since that, ever since Jake and and you know Scott Hall went into uh, DDP's house, I've been following. If you follow DDP on on YouTube, if you got him on Twitter, uh, go check him out. Jake worked the indie shows in Oregon a couple of weeks back and was invited to a strip club by some of the wrestlers after the show. Jake turned it down. He turned down the invite and said, if he went, he knows what would have happened next. Reportedly, Jake has also been in contact with Bray Wyatt, giving him advice at times on his character. That's awesome. And that's a coincidence because if you listen to Jim Ross's podcast, Jim Ross actually stated in his uh, Thinking Out Loud segment, Fantasy Booking, that he would have Jake manage Eric Harper and Luke Rowan. Oh, Eric Harper and Luke... Eric... Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. My God, how did I fuck that up? Jesus, I just got out of work. Excuse me. That he would manage Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. And uh, he would uh, pretty much be a heel manager for those while Bray Wyatt turns face and joins John Cena and those two teams would feud. That's just Jim Ross thinking out loud. I like when he thinks out loud. It's, it's different. Uh, I like hearing his ideas. But the reports of Jake talking to Bray Wyatt... That's that's great because there was no better heel at his time than Jake Roberts. He was diabolical. He was just evil. He 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 embodied what a heel was. And to hear that Jake and his ideas 
are, are being discussed with Bray Wyatt. That's that's good, you know, because Bray Wyatt right now probably the best heel in the business. Um, and uh, I only look forward to seeing Bray Wyatt develop his character even more uh, with an eventual championship reign down the line. That's just my hope for Bray Wyatt. But uh, that's just great to hear. I hope, uh, you know, Jake and Scott, Scott Hall, actually, you know, fight this, fight this to the death and just remain clean. You know, I don't want to hear anything bad about these guys, you know, slipping into depression. I know Scott Hall was in the hospital, had some heart problems. He got that checked out. JR actually landed himself in the hospital. He had some uh, complications of a stroke because he was taking medication that really wasn't good for him. So the doctor sorted that out. He's home resting right now. Hopefully he's back on the air soon for his podcast because it's a great listen. But, um, you know, I just hope everybody is well and healthy and uh, we don't have any more bad news in the wrestling business. Because after the Ultimate Warrior, man, I don't want to hear anything for a very, very long time. But that is WWE off the script, guys. Sorry for that, uh, that fuck up there. Luke Rowan and uh, Eric Harper, new guys on the WWE roster. I don't know when they're debuting, but I'll let you know when I find out. All right, so this is Off the Script, guys, part three. Hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, like, favorite, share, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. Let me know down below. I got Mario Kart Live coming for you guys later this afternoon. Got Monday Night Raw review coming tomorrow morning. I'm the hardest working motherfucker right here on YouTube the last couple of weeks. Thank you again to Justin Labar and the crew at WrestleZone.com. Share Shot Reality for shouting me out. Links to everything that they do will be down in the description below from now on. Go and check them out. Go and watch them. The best wrestling talk show on the internet. If you guys missed parts one and two, links are down below. Behind the mic yesterday, Dolph Ziggler. Is it time to turn off the show? Dolph Ziggler. That is down below if you guys missed that. Behind the mic number six. I'm out. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for Monday Night Raw. Take care. Hope you had a great weekend. I'll see you after Raw, guys. Take care.